Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover some basic GET requests in Rails. This can be done from the Rails app to an external API. And for this, we're going to be playing around with the HTT Party Gem uh, because it simplifies a lot of the actual logic that's needed in terms of creating the, the GET requests. And instead, we'll just focus on sort of how to handle these GET requests as we make them. Uh, because at the end of the day, people have their own preferences for what library they use, and this way we can just do a quick one-liner to uh, get something from an external API. And maybe you'll get inspired as you work through this, uh, because the actual API we're going to be using uh, has an entire list of free APIs to use. Looks like they have about 1,400 APIs that you can use that are free, or that they're listing, so that might also be worth taking a look at. Now to get started, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new Rails project real quick. I'll hit F11, Control L, and then we'll just do a Rails new, I'll call it video, and then I'll go ahead and I'll hit enter. All right, now that that's done, I'll go ahead and I'll CD into the video project, and then I'll go ahead and type a code dot to open up VS Code. That way we can see what we're doing. Now that that's done, we'll just very quickly create a new Rails controller which we'll just call pages and we'll give it a home action. All right, now that that's done, we should be ready to party. So the only thing left uh, is to do actually a bundle add for the HTT party gem. And that'll just go ahead and add that in. Now, generally, if you're doing some Rails get requests, you'll have to include some libraries or uh, choose which gem to use. In this case, we're using the HTT party gem because uh, it, it it very, very easily works. It's just a quick little httparty.get wherever you want to use it, and then you can just do your get request. They have a included example where you can create like a class for this, where you can do your initialize uh, and then set up your methods like that as like a wrapper. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to be using this for a basic get request because I know that some of you are just trying to get done with whatever project you're working on and you don't need all the extra bloat that just makes the project take forever to get up and running. So today we're going to be doing this as, as quickly and as painlessly as possible. And we'll just leave the tech debt problem for, uh, for tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and start our server with a Rails S, go into config and routes.rb. We're going to change the get to a root and the slash to a hash in our pages home line. And then once we're done with that, we can just go over to localhost port 3000 and we'll have an empty app to play around with. Now, at this point, we're pretty much ready to go. All we have to do is go into our views pages and our home page. I'm going to hit F11. We'll close the routes. And then we need to come into our controllers and our pages controller because we're going to be using both of these. I'm going to go ahead and I'll move the pages controller over here. I'll hit control B to hide the side panel and we can just pretend that we can see everything. So the basic idea is we're going to have something in our home page that we want to display on the screen. Maybe we want to display uh, the the categories that exist on this free API listing. So uh, the URL, all of these resources will be in the video description. This is the api.publicapis.org slash entries list, where you can see all of the available public APIs that you are free to use. Some of them are pretty interesting, like the, uh, I think there's a Final Fantasy 14 API on here. There's actually a couple, uh, but the, actual Final Fantasy one right here is the official Final Fantasy 14 one it looks like and yeah I don't know if this is the official one but it looks official enough for me so it's just a way for you to query information about the game I guess so th there's a whole bunch in here including Fortnite if you want to go do some dances or floss your teeth or something uh, but what we're going to be looking at is just this list as one example, and then we'll take a random entry in here. Maybe we'll do like the cats as a service one as another example. So to get started, all we really have to do is in our pages controller homepage, we need to create a variable. I'm going to call it response because generally when you do one of these get requests, you're uh, expecting a response back. The response is going to be equal to HTT party, oops, party dot get, and then whatever the URL is. In this case, because we're going to the public APIs right here, and I think they have a README, 
If we go to the readme, they have a get slash entries example that tells you what's in the entries, but I think they have a, a category section somewhere in here, which should be slash categories. There we go. So if we come down to the get categories, there's really nothing uh, explained here, uh, but the basic idea is it's just a list of all the categories. So we'll go ahead and we'll use that one. We'll come into our httparty.get. We'll do a https colon slash slash api dot public apis dot org slash categories. I'm actually gonna move the home back over to here uh, because it might be a bit easier to read that way. So this right here is all we really need for our response. And to test this, we can just do a console here or something and we can clear out our home page, and then we can just go ahead and refresh. And we should hopefully see our response right here. Might be a bit hard to read, so I'm gonna zoom in so that we can actually see what this says. But we can see here we have a parsed response with a count of 51, and our categories are listed right here. So we have animals, anime, anti-malware, uh, blockchain, open data, sports, test data, etc. So, uh, setting aside all of the crypto cringe that's in here, what we could do is we can call response dot and then try and grab something out of here if we want to. So we can try like a response dot body and see what we get back. Now we're going to get back an interesting looking string here that we can actually parse. So if you've used like JavaScript before, you're probably familiar with doing something like JSON dot parse and then JSON dot stringify if you need to convert between things. What we can do here is we can call json.parse on the response.body just like we would in JavaScript. If we go ahead and we run that, we now get a wonderful hash we can play around with. So if we call this json.parse on the response.body, we can then pop into here, for example, and do something like, let's grab the categories. And it's a little bit hard to see. You'll see it in the code in a second here but this allows us to grab each of the categories inside of an array. So if we come into our pages controller, we can do exactly what we just did. We'll set our uh, at response to be equal to json.parse the response.body. And then we can set our at categories to be equal to the at response. And then we just open up some uh, square brackets, put in a string, and then we grab the categories in there. Now, if we come into our home page, we can just print out both of those. We can do an at response right here with a slash HR, oops, HR slash, and then our at categories below that, assuming I spell this correctly. And now if we refresh the page, you'll see that we have our first list right here, which is our response. And then right here, we have our parsed response specifically for the categories. Now at this point, you can use this just like you would any other Ruby object. So maybe we wanna come in here or collection or whatever. Uh, we can do something like at categories.each do cat. And this might, oops, this might look familiar if you followed along with the categories tutorial with the uh, one to many relationship, but it's gonna be exactly the same, uh, assuming GitHub Copilot lets me code, where we can just throw in some Ruby code inside this P tag We'll iterate through this and we'll just throw each one into its own p tag. And then right here, we have it iterated just like we would with a like Rails specific model of our categories. The important thing to note here is the way that we're using this. We're making an API request every time we refresh the page. And I think depending on the API we use, we'll use the cat one as an example or the cats as a service one that can heavily slow down your page. So this is something you wanna consider throwing into a background job, getting the data once, saving it, doing something to increase performance over just doing these uh, frequent API requests. It's also something where you probably won't be using a free API when you do stuff. So you do also wanna consider the billing costs of having, let's say 10,000 users visit your website where each one is hitting the API that you have to pay for every time you access it. So caching this or saving it in some way is definitely worth looking into, uh, but that's gonna go in like a case by case basis based on what you're doing. Like if you're doing image recognition and the user uploads an image, you probably don't want to cache the uh, result every single time unless you're caching it specifically for that image. Otherwise someone might upload a potato salad image and I might upload a hot dog and they'll both say that they're potato salad because you just cached the first guy's 
uh, like image recognition result. In that case, it wouldn't really make a lot of sense. I don't know why I have potato salad on, on my mind today or why I'm saying it like potato salad, but whatever. Uh, so that is one way to handle the uh, responses here. The other thing we can do is we can grab, let's say, a random API off of this list because at the end of the day, this is a list of just random APIs. And we'll grab this cat as a service one. And in this case, it gives us a link. So if we go to the link by hitting control and left clicking, we get a bunch of like API documentation here that tells us how to use this. Now, some of it's interesting. Like if we click random cat, it'll give us an actual image of a cat. We can also grab an image of a cat with some random text. If we grab this slash cat slash says slash text and we paste it up here after the cat as a service and we go to that URL, you'll see it's just an image with colon text on it. So we're not gonna be playing around with images because that's a bit beyond the scope of this, but uh, assuming I don't close the website, at the bottom here, we can see that they have an example where you can grab all of the different tags that the cat as a service tool uses. And if we go there, we can even pick a specific tag. So in this case, we have the get all tags button here, but we also have the get all cute cats tag, uh, which is just cats. And then the parameter is going to be tags equals cute. So we'll just go ahead and we'll try that. If we come into our, and I know this is contrived, but it, it's just an easy way to learn how this stuff works. If we go into our uh, controller and we type something like json.parse, we can then do a httparty.get request where we go to https colon slash slash cat as a service dot com slash api slash tags and then in here we can just call dot body on the end of it and this will get us all of those tags so instead of just doing the get all cute tags or get all cute cats tag we can just get all of the tags we can iterate through these and i actually think this is a good example to go through because this one's going to be a bigger hit because it's a bigger request uh, so we do have our at cat facts now. So let's go ahead and let's use our at cat facts. I feel like a crazy person right now. Uh, we can just go ahead and do at cat underscore facts. And then below that, we can iterate through it. But for right now, let's just do this at cat facts and we'll refresh the page. And we'll take a look at what this does to our reload time. So if we reload, you can see we're already hitting that point where it's 760 milliseconds to refresh. And we're getting that hit just because this is a much bigger API. You can see we went from 150-ish milliseconds to about 750. And if we look at what that actual response was, this is why it was such a big response because it's a lot more data that it has to grab. If we come down here, it could also just be a slower server, I should say. But if we come down here, we can then do a uh, at cat underscore facts dot each do fact and then we can do an end, and then we'll just do another P tag. And then in here we can just do our fact, something like this. We'll go ahead and we'll save that. And then if we refresh the page, we'll take another hit to our performance. But if we come down here, you can see it's iterating through all of the different, uh, that is what my cat is right there. He's a Maine Coon. All of the different types of cats here, including the uh, Norwegian forest cats. But you get the idea, like you can, pretty easily grab a bunch of data like this. I'm pretty sure most people are familiar with what a get request is, but in this way, you're sort of doing it similar to how you would in JavaScript with just a quick get request and a response. And the HTTP uh, party gem does do a pretty good job of breaking this up in a uh, very digestible way. And you do have the ability to like pass in your options like right here if you need to. Uh, so if you're trying to pass in headers or something, I think they have an example of that somewhere. Uh, they even have an example of like grabbing the response headers in here, I think. Yeah, response.headers.inspect. Uh, but overall, it's just a very easy way to play around with HTTP requests and uh, get something working. So what I'd suggest you try to do is go down the list of API entries. Again, I'll have a link to this in the video description. Uh, just pick one of these and see if you can grab some data from it just as like an exercise to see if uh, if you're capable of um, you know, working with something like this. Now you do have other HTTP libraries that you could use. You have like the built-in Ruby thing where you can include three different uh, packages and your controller or whatever, and then do like your actual Rails response like that. Uh, but sometimes the easiest way is just the best way. Maybe you just need to do a, a get request once a day in your app. And this just seems appealing to you because you want to get stuff done. In that case, this might be like worth looking at. 
Uh, but yeah, hopefully this was, I don't know, interesting, informative, something. Um, and yeah, hopefully you got something out of this and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.